chapter with big impression times small chapter with big impression we shall learn and revise quickly to save time about enzymes their basic characteristics their mechanism of action factors affecting their rate of reaction and finally inhibitors so what are enzymes enzymes are basically proteins they are made up of amino acids which increase efficiency of biochemical reactions which increase rate of biochemical reactions and which catalyze biochemical reactions and they also called as biocatalyst enzymes have globular structure and they are very specific in their action one enzyme for one type of reaction there is a small part of enzyme which actually actively participate in reaction that is called as active site important thing to remember now active site consists of few amino acids only and the rest of the whole structure of amino acid or enzyme sorry maintain globular structure so what is the function of other than active site of the enzyme and that is to maintain globular structure non protein parts are sometime required by enzymes to act properly these non protein i repeat non protein parts of enzymes which are required by enzymes are called as their cofactors so cofactors act as bridge between enzyme and substrate they help to recognize bind or attach with the substrate and then start the reaction cofactors provide chemical energy in few reactions and that is very important mcq to remember now examples of cofactors include magnesium ions ferric ions copper ions and zinc ions these are inorganic ions which are cofactors if these cofactors are detachable mean they can be attached and they can be detached easily then they are called as activators now important thing to remember here is that activators are actually not whole enzymes they are cofactors which can be detached from the enzymes easily now if cofactors are attached covalently or they are bonded covalently with the enzyme they are called as prosthetic groups these terms are related to cofactors please remember if they are covalently bonded or you can say strongly bonded they are prosthetic group and if they are loosely bonded weakly bonded and they can be detached easily then they will be called as coenzyme so coenzyme is a type of cofactor now coenzymes closely relate with vitamins how they relate with vitamins raw material for coenzyme synthesis is provided by vitamins so coenzymes are needed in very small amount because they are recycled and these can be used again and again so that's why if small amount is present that small amount will be enough for so many types of steps or so many cycles of the reactions enzyme without its coenzyme or prosthetic group is called apoenzyme that is the most important point in this slide apoenzyme is the only enzyme without its coenzyme or prosthetic group and mostly apoenzymes are inactive an enzyme with its cofactor when its cofactor is attached with the apoenzyme that is called as holoenzyme and holoenzyme is actually active form of the enzyme now enzymes involved in photosynthesis are found in chloroplast these facts are important to remember enzymes involved in cellular respiration are found in mitochondria enzymes involved in protein synthesis are found in ribosomes these three facts are important for the mcqs now characteristics enzymes are very specific in their actions they are sensitive to even a minor change in ph temperature and substrate enzymes lower the activation energy of reactions what is activation energy the energy required by a reaction to start so they lower the activation energy that's why it is easy to start the chemical reactions pepsin is a powerful protein digesting enzyme so pepsin digest protein it is produced in an inactive form to stop it from damaging cells internals if pepsin is secreted as it is 
then that pepsin actually will damage the cell organelles or in, in the cytoplasm that's why it is secreted in an inactive form and the inactive form of pepsin is pepsinogen enzymes have three dimensional globular shape enzymes can be used again and again similarly mechanism Enzymes act on their specific substrates and convert them into products. So substrates actually change into product. Respiration and photosynthesis are metabolic pathways, not single reactions. So that can be asked in a way that which of the following are not a single reaction or which of the following is a cascade of reactions. So they are respiration and photosynthesis. Enzymes work in series of reactions when they are asked and hand over their product to next one. So in a series, first enzyme convert the, the substrate into first product or intermediate product. Then it hand over that intermediate product to the next enzyme. Then next enzyme will convert into some other type and then that second will hand over to the third and so on. In this way, series of reactions will occur and such type of reactions are termed as pathways or cascade reactions now what is feedback inhibition that is very important to understand feedback inhibition feedback is the return so feedback occurs when final product of any pathway act as inhibitor what happens the final product comes and attach with the starting enzyme and stop its working or action in this way whole reaction becomes seized or inhibited that's why such mechanisms are termed as feedback inhibition active site is charged it has charge either mostly it is has negative charge there are two definite regions in active sites binding and catalytic sites so binding region and catalytic region what is the function Binding region or binding site help to recognize and bind, recognize and bind with substrate to form enzyme substrate complex. Now these two keywords are important, recognize and bind. Catalytic site then catalyze the reaction after the binding and transform substrate into product. So these two regions of the active sites are important to remember. Now, enzymes require aqueous medium water for their activity. Without aqueous medium, enzymes cannot work. In mitochondria and chloroplast, enzymes remain attached with membranes. That is seem unimportant, but it is very important point to know where enzymes are found which perform activities in mitochondria and chloroplast. So they are found attached with their membranes. Emil Fischer in 1890 suggested lock and key model. This model suggests that active site is a rigid structure, fixed structure, definite structure with no flexibility and is used as template or used as a key to open the locks. Koshland in 1959 proposed induced fit model. What is that model? It suggests that substrate induced changes substrate induced changes in enzymes and uh, which enable enzymes to perform effectively and to bind with the substrate easily so substrates are actually stimulus in the Koshland model factors enzymes are specific due to their specific chemistry and configuration no question can be asked here that why enzymes have specific or they are uh, specific in their actions so they are specific due to or because of their specific chemistry and their specific configuration conformation or their structure if enzyme concentration is doubled the rate of reaction will be doubled in excess substrate the condition is excess substrate if substrate is in excess then by increasing the or by doubling the enzyme concentration the rate of reaction will double if all the active sites are occupied then there will be no increase in rate of reaction because active sites are actually which take part in the reaction increase in temperature increase the rate of reaction up to a certain limit 
the enzyme work best at their optimum temperature so the temperature at which enzyme work at their best is called as optimum temperature human body temperature is 37 degree centigrade which is optimum temperature for human enzyme heat provide activation energy and kinetic energy when any reaction is heated high temperature denature the globular structure of enzyme so what is impact of high temperature on the enzyme high temperature actually denature globular structure of enzymes so change in optimum ph change the ionization of amino acid at active sites so you can be asked that what is the role of change in ph on the enzymes so changing ph may ionize the may change the ionization process of amino acids at active sites which actually hinder the catalytic activity extreme changes in ph cause breaking the bonds in enzymes and they denature so enzymes can be denatured by two ways the first way is by increasing temperature and the second way is by increasing ph now this table shows different optimum ph for different enzymes to remember them is very important uh, especially enterokinase catalase chymotrypsin and arginase these are already asked in the past paper so please remember these values by repeating or by memorization simply inhibitors very important part of this chapter very very important what are inhibitors inhibitors in other word stoppers or blockers chemical substances which react or bind with enzymes and block the active sites temporarily or permanently are called inhibitors so those chemical substances which actually block or inhibit the enzymes from their actions are called as inhibitors there are two types of inhibitors irreversible and reversible irreversible block the active site completely by forming covalent bonds or destroying the globular shape of the enzyme or physically block the active site so in three ways irreversible uh, inhibitors can block the active sites while reversible inhibitors form weak linkages with enzymes and these linkages can be broken and can be detached from the enzymes so they can be neutralized there are two types of reversible inhibitors further competitive inhibitors have similar structure which mislead active sites to bind with them similarly non competitive inhibitors form enzyme inhibitor complexes other than active sites so competitive inhibitors bind with active site while non competitive bind with the rest part of the enzyme not with the active site they actually alter the enzyme structure non competitive inhibitors and stop the catalysis even if the substrate binds with the enzyme active site now important fact to remember malonic acid is a competitor inhibitor for succinic acid succinic acid is a substance and the chemical structures of both succinic acid and malonic acid are similar except one hydrogen so malonic acid can mislead the enzyme and attach with the enzyme and will act as a competitive inhibitor hope you have learned what you needed next video inshallah chapter 4 complete concepts and summary Thank you.